All right, Ben Manning, today is Tuesday. It's May 10th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barcelona Sports here with Chief. Chief, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good. You all settled in, you, you know, a week off. You had a you had a big move, big closing, a lot of things going on. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Clap yeah. Back. Yeah. I think I'm I'm basically done. And I was telling you before we started where it's like last night the uh, washer dryer system caught on fire. Okay. Yeah, it's a tough first, so, uh, you know, doing first laundry week. for the first time and it's a little smaller than in uh, of a unit than in my apartment. Uh, my old apartment, I overloaded it, smoking like hell. Uh, you know, I was putting stuff in the in the dungeon, in the store. It's like the storage area. And the girlfriend's like calling me on the phone. I'm like, what? Like, she's like, something's on fire. And I'm like, fuck. And then I'm like, who do I call about this being on fire? I'm like, oh, shit. It's on you, brother. It's me. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's I was here. like, you know what? I don't know what to do. So I, let's just unplug it and we will wait a while and then we'll unload some of it so we just put like all these wet clothes in the bathtub for a while and then did half a load and that seemed to work fine so i think we just got to monitor how much we put in there but it was like a scary realization that all of my like household problems which i don't know how to fix fucking anything yeah that were always just a phone call away from fixing now that's i just have to figure that stuff i out. feel like i mean obviously everyone has that moment it's yeah. yours was uh to cap your first week and it was a dryer going on fire mm-hmm. white Sox dave was he put his fucking caveman foot in the tub <laughs> his, which is his big stumpy foot yeah, fell through his tub. or yeah. is it a baby foot remember that baby foot gate well, it's, uh, it's well, he, a it's a stump either way. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, it was just proven that it was a baby right. foot. Baby foot gate was. He actually has like oddly enormous feet for his size. Baby foot gate. Well, I think he just wears bigger shoes. That was like the bigger thing. Oh, like yeah. He so just, he he, cl- he wears a size twelve, but has wears like a he's yeah, like, like an not, actually a size eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not really, but like I watch the stool scenes. We, I remember that. I remember that. We measured his feet. Yeah. I got the guy from Marshalls to measure right. DSW shoe. Yeah, to yeah, mar- yeah. I do remember that now. What, what was the number? Please tell me it was like nine and a half. And he's just like, I forget what it was, but he like, I don't know. It's all. In Wasn't stuff. one bigger than the other? <laughs> like, I think it was. He's uh, a, it may yeah. have been. May have been. May have, one it may have been bigger than the other. But it wasn't that big of a difference as I thought it would be because I thought he was just wearing 11s with a nine and a half foot. You know, yeah, that's what yeah. I was in the impression. And then remember, I mean that was, you would believe that too. Bob. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's definitely something he would do. I mean, it, it looks like he has center blocks on his feet sometimes. Yeah, because they're so big with yeah. those air forces. So, um, but they're no, disproportional to his body. I'm sad to report that it's not. I don't, I don't believe that's the real case. So. Damn. Um. Yeah. Regardless, mm-hmm. you know what are you gonna do? Yep. Um. Okay. So what's the um? What's the plan today? So this was a uh, Twitter follower listener suggestion. And sent me the links, and then I did some further research. But it's the 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 three cities, and then in air quote, quotes corporations that still control the world, and they're all linked back to the Roman Empire. So it's really about how the Roman Empire controls the world, and to this day, like there's just been one lineage, and it seemed like we had all this chaos going on, and this country's up, this country's down, but. It, in reality, there are three power bases in the world that are still holding true Mm. for thousands of years. And it's like the more you research, you're like, huh, well, that's kind of connected to this. And that's kind of connected to that from all these old episodes that we did. And this is, you know, we haven't done like a purely uh, tinfoil one in a while. This one's very tinfoil. tinfoil Oh, yeah. How about that? The people have had their tinfoil hats away for a little bit. I know. We got to dig them back out, dust them off. Yeah. Now it's back. Now it's back. Uh, before we get into it, though, we do want to talk about the advertiser for this show this week, and it is Roman. Perfect timing. Perfect. Roman Empire. Yes, very perfect yep. timing. So, uh, and we're going to talk about three cities that have these big phallic statues. Okay, Washington D.C., the Vatican City, and the City of London. They all have like you know Washington Monument. It's just a big mm-hmm. dick keeping your dick hard. That's what this episode's there all you about. Go. Keeping yep. your dick hard, or. Uh, you know, looking to have a better experience and last longer in bed. The folks at Roman an Online Men's Health Company, they changed the game with the Roman Swipes. It's the secret to longer lasting sex. And uh, the Swipes are a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, and they're fast acting, but they don't require a prescription. Roman can ship swipes to you in discreet, unmarked packaging, and each swipe packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just take the swipe out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry. You're good to go. That's it. Go to GetRoman.com slash dogwalk to get $10 off when you choose a monthly plan. 
That's GetRoman.com slash dog walk. One more time, GetRoman.com slash dog walk. Make sure you're using these. Mm-hmm. Got to. Yeah, you have to. Yep. So uh, go to that go to that tag, that backslash dog walk, and uh, grab yourself some swipes. Mm-hmm. All right, where are we starting? Let's start. Well, that, we'll start with those three cities. Mm-hmm. So the three cities, and, and this was, I will say off the top, that the website that really broke this down in kind of a longer article, I would say not exactly reputable. It's not like it was, uh, I don't even know what would a reputable website the would. The New England Sports uh, or the, what was M- Journal of Medicine. Journal of Medicine. We Medicine. found out that that was bullshit though too. So that's what I mean. You're just like, I don't know. But it, it's not like some well-known thing. But the the premise of this is that there's the city of London and we'll get into what that actually is because it's not London the way you think of it. It's this whole different entity. Ooh. Uh, Washington, D.C. and the Vatican. And this there are the, this theory claims that those are the power bases and they're all linked to each other and they all originally link their power all the way back to the Roman Empire uh, because obviously at the seat of Rome, you know, the, the headquarters of, of, of all of Catholicism is in Rome. It's the Vatican City, which it's, it's in Rome. It's in Italy. It's not a part of Rome. It's not a part of Italy. It's its own country. And they have ungodly amounts of power, money, and influence all over the world. Uh, D.C., you know, in America here, and the and the city of London, and I, like I said, I'll break all that down. And they, this thing claims that those power bases that are all linked together control politicians, the court system, education, food supply, natural resources, the media, foreign policy, uh, the global economy. And then one thing that you can actually measure is that 80% of the world's wealth flows through those three cities and really those three like countries, corporations. Okay. Oh, I'm fucking all in on this. You're already. in. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's, it's come got on. all of it. Okay. And then again, the website claims that the goal of this entity, okay is to build a totalitarian rule on a global scale where people will be divided into rulers and ruled. So kind of like the the Plato um, theory there. Rulers and ruled after they have depopulated the world to numbers they wish to rule over. And that depopulation triggered a memory from an old throwback, Tinfoil Tuesday, the Georgia Guidestones. Remember that? Oh, yeah. They have the mysterious statue, and it's written in like eight different languages, and it was basically you know some random shit, random shit that would kind of act as like a um, like a new world order, Ten Commandments sort yeah. of thing. And one of them, and it was like a very specific number, said limit the world's population to five hundred million. So we're at like eight billion right now worldwide. Going to five hundred million would would be a catastrophe okay like oh my god like like you can't even fat like what is that what's the math on that harry you you're a smart kid kind of what's the math i wouldn't on? say smart but okay what, what's the math <laughs> what percentage billion? what percentage fi- is 500 million of 8 billion oh, i mean you're losing i seven, think it's 12 and a half percent it was the seven yeah i think it's 12 and a half percent. i don't know i don't know how to approach that too many zeros that's a lot of yeah zeros. see I, motherfucker you don't like it when it's on when, when yeah. it's on someone else <laughs> I'm glad you asked him and not me. You knew I wouldn't know it, so you asked fucking him. See, Harry, all the people out there. I can tell when you're googling and or yeah. doing your calculator, so that I can wait for it. But I think it's I think it's twelve and a half percent. But I could just be very mm-hmm. dumb. Um, that you know that that's all that would be left would be twelve and a half percent of the world's population if we had adhered to that. Okay, and that is the the uh, the conspiracy theory, like that that stated goal that they want to divide the world into rulers and ruled and have this population number that they see fit. And there's no mention of the Georgia Guidestones specifically in this, you know, we'll call it theory article thing, but it just triggered my brain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, And then one of the things that all these cities have in common is they have these phallic statues that I said kind of in the ad read for Roman. They, They call them obelisks. And obelisks are, you know, they're just these big, tall, dick-shaped statues, okay? So everybody here in America, I would assume, knows what the Washington Monument looks like. It's yep. D.C., big pointy thing at the top, looks like a dick, okay? Well, That's a really, though. 
It's a little too cone to be a. Yeah, but you, know, you get the idea. Point. Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. For of course. sure. Yeah. But yeah, the, you know. Yeah, there's no veins or anything yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're asking. That's squared off. Yeah, squared off for sure. It would be, be an odd dick. Yeah. 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 That's like. We're yeah. all in agreement. There. All right. Yeah. Sorry. So right angles, not great. Yeah. Um, but they're called, that type of structure is called an obelisk. There's one in the city of London as well. And that's called Cleopatra's Needle. It has like a more formal name, but most people call it Cleopatra's Needle. And then there's uh, a Vatican obel uh, Vatican obelisk as well. And that sits in the middle of St. Peter's Square, which I'm sure most people would recognize that if they saw a picture of it. And that actually sits in the middle of a circle. And they're thinking that that is actually represent the, the speculation is that that symbol is meaning like fertility because that circle is supposed to represent a vagina. The big thing is a dick. And then if you if you've read like that Dan Brown novel or uh, Dan Brown was um, Da Vinci Code. Right? Thank you. The Da Vinci Code. And then we've talked on this podcast before about John Marco Allegro, who wrote um, the Dead Sea Scrolls, Mushrooms and the, and the Christian Myth, OK, which said that early Christianity was really. And then the Dan Brown novel says the same thing. Uh, early Christianity was really like a fertility cult. Okay, but they would trip on mushrooms and uh, like have these weird sex act cults. Mm. Um, and so they're saying like right in the, the seat of the Vatican, St. Peter's Square, the number one symbol for the fertility cult is right there. Okay, and they took that, they took that um, one that's in St. Peter's Square is actually from Egypt and they moved it up there in like the, like the late 1500s, I think if I have the dates right. So it's like, huh, like that's kind of odd. We, and then, um, you know, and then you go back into like this, you know, the, the John Marco Allegro guy, a quick thing on him. Okay. John Marco Allegro is not like some schlub. He was a guy who was hired by Christians when they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls because he was like this world renowned uh, religious scholar and linguist. And he wrote that book that I, he wrote two books. I think I confabulated that and put them into one, but it's like the, I'll Google it right now and make sure I have the titles right. Um, but he, he in basically he was in charge of interpreting the Dead Sea Scrolls, which were, you know, thousands and thousands of years old and written in this language that nobody knew about. And so he wrote the sacred mushroom and the cross. Um, and then there's the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian myth. And, he, he, this is like one of those crazy, crazy things because in that he, he became like agnostic where he was just like, I was this fervent religious person. I read this book and interpreted this book. It completely changed my mind. He wrote this book and you remember what happened to that book? I don't. The Catholic church bought it out of publication. So he wrote it in 1970. It was not allowed to be like published again because the Catholic Church bought the rights because they found it to be like so dangerous. Mm -hmm. So that was John Marco Allegro. And and then we talk about like the Council of Nicaea where a lot of, where the Bible was really codified. The New Testament was kind of glued together with the Old Testament that you, you know, that we, the Bible that we have now and that Judeo-Christian ethic is born out of that. That was written in 324. St. Nicholas was there, uh, you know, Santa Claus myth guy was there and that was really Rome trying to control Christianity and bring it into the fold of the empire because it was this growing movement that they couldn't really control. And that's how Christianity came into, uh, into the Roman emperor and the emperor of Rome at that time, which I believe was Constantine. Um, he was like baptized on his deathbed, but he didn't really believe shit. It was all just a power play. Uh, to keep you know the Roman Empire intact, so they had all these you know other gods from before. Like if you watch the movie Gladiator, they're praying to this god and that god, and then in 324, they're like, nope, we're with the Catholics and the Christians now. So that's where that all came from. I, and then now I want to talk about that city of London because this is something that I had heard of before, but I had never really researched. It's fucking insane, city of London. Okay. So London was founded by the Romans like, you know, 2000 years ago. They set up a trading outpost on the River Thames. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong too, but the, the main river that cuts through London and they set up this big trading outpost and we're making a fuck ton of money. Roman Empire collapses. 
but they had built this wall around London, okay? And the people who lived in, in the city of London, which is like this small area, and if you look at a map of London now, it's almost like direct smack dab in the middle, but it's not really even a part of the London that we think of as London. It's like its own thing. And yeah, that's why the way you were kept saying the city of London was confusing me. So there's like the city of London and then and, London and then there's like London 2.0. Yeah. Okay. 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 So London 2.0. That's how I was like, what? Yeah. So like the way you were saying it was like, am I thinking of the right fucking London? There's two, I wasn't. But you are. Yeah. yeah but yeah. you're not. I'm, but I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so they, this city of London was operating under its own accord. Okay. For years. And like England was going through all these different, you know, rising and falling kingdoms and civil wars. And, and they were really kind of excluded from that. They were just like this walled city in this, in the middle of London and England. And, and that really was London. I should say they were just like their own thing. And the way that even today that you can kind of think of them is like they're they're It's called the city of London. They have their own flag. They have their own mayor. They have their own taxes. They really operate more like Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, than they would say like a Liverpool or a Manchester or something like that. Like they're their own like kind of sovereign country. And it's been that way basically since its founding. And then that was written into law basically as an agreement by uh, William the Conqueror, who was like, if you guys call me your king, I'll leave you alone. You guys get, get to do whatever the fuck you want. Cause he was having, he was trying to like lay seas and like couldn't really couldn't really break them down. Okay. But then like that London bridge, that famous bridge, like if that runs right into the city of London, the mm -hmm. ancient city of London, it'll have like, you, you'll see, like they have their own flag, which looks kind of like the English flag, but it has like a sword in the upper left-hand quadrant, like this downward facing sword and that they have their own crest, their own flag, their own mayor. And they have like their, they have a representative in Congress or, you know, their, their, their version of Congress, but it's not, like it, they do their elections and stuff way differently. So like the laws that go out for the rest of the country about voting rights or this or that city of London is just like, no, nah, we're not doing that. And they don't have to, they're just, they play by their own rules. Damn. Okay. And you want to know what's in the city of London? The a large, the largest, uh, a big dick structure. Well, yeah, obviously. big dick structure. <laughs> we, the, the, that's the Cleopatra's needle. You have Freemasons hall. Okay. So, the Freemasons, like the largest hall uh, okay. it's gathering not like center. The first one or anything like that? The first one of the Freemasons was in Scotland, mm -hmm. but this is like kind of the world headquarters. Okay, the is, hub. The hub is in, and it's this weird looking giant stone building in the city of London. Uh, and it's called the United Grand Lodge of London. They ho they, they're home to the Rothschild family and which is and they run the bank of england so like the central bank of england is run by this family the rothschilds they're in every they pop up in basically every single conspiracy theory the rothschilds family because they have banking networks all over the world including the united states lloyd's of london i'm sure you've heard of that uh the london stock exchange 384 branches of foreign banks uh the the british media empires are run out of there and so you have all of these like power bases are run out of the city of London and they don't really have any laws for the country of, you know, United Kingdom really apply to them because they're, 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 they're kind of like, like they're English citizens, but they're at like an elevated level. Like mm. we're, we're our own thing. We get some of the benefits of being an English citizen. But if you if you guys try to impose on something that we don't like, we're we're no, we're, we're not a part of that. So like the, that wall that really protected them for, you know, hundreds and thousands of years is largely gone. There are pieces of it that are still there, but it's not like this fortress. So like you can walk in and out of the city of London like, oh, I'm in the city of London. Oh, I'm in like London proper, like without necessarily knowing. But all of the power base for for London economically uh, is run right through there. So there's all sorts of conspiracy theories. So we could probably do a whole episode on just the city of London. Yeah. I mean, about all the money that runs through there that goes unchecked. And I love we're going to get some, some London fans be like, oh, you, you don't even know about this. There's yeah. Gonna, oh, this I would love that. So deep. I, oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. And, uh, and then same thing. You know, there's like some very similar things with uh, Washington, D.C., which I didn't know. 
Okay, so Washington D.C. has its own constitution. Okay, and it's it, it, there was a an act passed in 1871 by Congress saying that uh, the United States has its like, there's the United States and then there's the corporate government of the District of Columbia. So it's like they're their own corporation, and like they like they don't have like an electoral college seat right in our elections. But they also don't necessarily have all like the the laws applied to different institutions that are running out of there. So like there's another thing where it's like, well, who's like monitoring like this, quote unquote, like like the deep state and people are like get really bent out of shape about that term, the deep state. I heard uh, Mike Baker, who is a former CIA guy, he goes on Rogan all the time. He described it as like, look, China, Russia, all these other countries historically uh, they don't go through changes in leadership every four years. So they're at like a much stronger place uh, than, than we are because they can plan 30 years in advance where we really can't. And the deep state, you know, and that's a, a term that he used. And it's like, it, it gets people like, oh, what's a deep state? Like, it sounds like very conspiratorial, but it's just like a, it's a governing body that kind of, you know, operates consistently through regimes and that, you know, you can say that's good or bad or can lead to some problems and I'm sure it does, but that's really what, what he was at least was referring to, um, when he talked about that. So I want to go back to that. And then, you know, this, the, the conspiracy really is that this is all about banking. Okay. So the United States said, Hey, you know what? We're getting out of this system here, this, this system of banking, uh, that has led to all sorts of problems. Um, and, um, hold on, I want to scroll to the right part. So, you know, it's like what happened when the United States kind of, you know, they've been an independent country, they signed this declaration of independence and they have this treaty of Paris, right? Well, the treaty of Paris says that we still are technically citizens of the British King and Queen that we're sovereign, but we're not. Okay. And that was in the, the treaty of 1783 declaring independence from Great Britain. However, this treaty identifies the king and queen, king and or queen of England as the prince of the United States. And you can go to the treaty and look that up to find that language. Um, and it has like this Bouvier law, uh, dictionary in, um, I always struggle with this words, monarchical, like a monarch, yeah, okay, yeah, government. I know what you're saying. Um, subject owes permanent allegiance to the monarch, in which case British subjects colonized in America owed permanent allegiance to the monarch. So you're like, you're independent, kind of, okay? But you still ultimately go back and, you know, we're, we're really kind of in charge, okay? So, um, and then you had this, they tried to reverse that, right, over time. And... They, set, they signed this treaty in 1794. The treaty signed in 1794 between England and the United States was negotiated by John Jay, Esquire, who's a lawyer. John Jay was a uh, representative. I think he might have run for president way back. He was like one of the founding fathers. His name's on the Declaration of Independence. And um, there were like articles in that treaty that said, yeah, we're, not, we're independent, but not really. So mm -hmm. you guys can go ahead and look at that. And then if you look at the War of 1812, okay, United States canceled the charter of the first national bank in 1811. Okay. So everyone's like, what was the war of 1812 about? And it's like, well, we had, you know, France and England were at war and they're battling over Canada. And that's been a longstanding thing. And we're, you know, having trade, you know, issues with both of them. And eventually they just came. This thing is saying we canceled that charter, the first national bank in 1811 immediately afterwards. They, that gets canceled in 1811. They, uh, 4,500 British troops sail over, burnt down the White House, both houses of Congress, the War Office, U.S. Department of Treasury, and destroyed the ratification record signed by 12, United, uh, 12 of the U.S. states uh, and the U.S. Constitution there within the, the 13th Amendment was to stop anybody from, like that, that amendment, that last amendment that was you know, destroyed was talking about people receiving titles of nobility. So that war, the War of 1812 lasted three years and the bank charter was reestablished in 1816 after the ratification of the Treaty of Ghent in 1815. So there's like this famous line about, you know, what was the, 
what was the uh, American Revolution really fought about? And Ben Franklin was like, it was really just about money, the power of money. So not really taxation without representation. It was really just about who is in charge of printing the money and who is really running things. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. And it all goes back to like the, even the King of England, Queen of England can't enter the city of London without like permission. Like they need like a, a special invitation. There's like a ceremony that where it's, you know, where they just, they need that. And the, the mayor of London has to like accept them. And the mayor of London, like drives around in like, like this horse drawn golden carriage thing. Like it's like this, and he has like this big, like, Oh, the honorable such and such of the city of London. Like it's, it's like a, a way more formal old world deal than what you would have um, with like the mayor of London who just wears like a normal suit and walks around like a guy. Like this is like a regal person who's like, ah, we're really our own thing. You, like a you, monocle and shit? Yeah, like, or yeah. like a, like, like the mayor is kind of kingly himself. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're the king, as we said, you know, 500 years ago, but we're in charge of this shit too. And so that's like, that's kind of what's going on still to this day. And you have all the money power bases right in that city of London and they're influencing policy all over the world to the point that, you know, we ha why, why was the White House burned down? The Rothschilds told them to, because like, we're not doing this national bank thing, okay? And then the, that went on for like 100 years. We didn't, have, we didn't have a Federal Reserve Bank, and we've talked about this on a previous dog walk too with Woodrow Wilson. So he gets elected in 1912. He signs the Federal Reserve Act creating a, a central bank because we had had these kind of ebbs and flows, like these booms and busts that were happening a lot. And people, some people say that those were artificially created to scare the public into agreeing to a national bank at, by like, you know, the other powers that be that were in America, uh, JP Morgan Chase and Rockefeller and those people, they wanted the central bank because they were in with the Rothschilds. And there's like some intermarrying going on between like these elite, elite, elite wealthiest people in the world. And they all take their, their cues can go all the way back to the Roman empire where it's like you had the um, Knights Templar, okay? That were, they were like these Christian Knights who were supposedly, if you listen, if you believe the Da Vinci code, they were in charge of like protecting Jesus lineage. Okay, there's like a, like he had kids and he was in charge of like the the Knights Templar were in charge of, of protecting that secret. And then they were also protecting people who were making a pilgrimage from Europe back to, you know, stations of the cross in Israel. And they would, cause that was like a long arduous journey. So you would stay with them and you could say, hey, like I'm gonna take this bank note that I got in England from their chapter there and I'm stopping in France, I'm stopping in Germany, I'm stopping here and there, and you could take that and they would give you money. So it's like they kind of like, the Knights Templar effectively invented modern banking. And then Knights Templar turned into the Prior of Scion and they turn into the Freemasons who have these institutions everywhere. And they were, back then, there's language in the Bible that says like you're not allowed to do loans with interest, okay? So people would complain to the Vatican saying, hey, like these Knights Templar are charging interest. And, you know, we go around, they collect money and it's blah, blah, blah. And the Vatican's just like, yeah, they're fine. Okay. And then the King of France had them all killed and they went into hiding and they popped back up as the Freemasons. So it's like you had these Knights Templar that go all the way back to Roman times, go underground, come back up as Freemasons, go underground again, come back up. And now they're like running still the banking industry across the world. And, and apparently, according to these theorists, everything else. It's a bananas thing. And then there's like these, you know, symbols that are all around DC. Like DC has like, you know, Washington, George Washington was a Freemason. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we did a yeah. Freemasons episode. Okay, right. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know what what was remembered. Sometimes I, yeah, I forget yeah. no, things no, too. No, no, it's always good to refresh. Yeah. I don't remember. And and know. even like the grid, like the, because he was also a surveyor. So he designed Washington, D.C. And so he put like all these kind of Freemason symbols into the layout of the city. So it's like it makes like that triangular 
symbol and it you know so it has like an upside down star from like different monuments and different places and different power you know important buildings in the city and different roads they all make like these symbols then he designed it that way on purpose mm. so there's all these kind of symbols that li link everything back to these ancient symbols and ancient organizations and the speculation is that the power bases that have set themselves up outside of traditional government rule, the Vatican, City of London, Washington, D.C., are able to operate unfettered from the law of the land because that is how they set it up initially. Mm -hmm. And now they're still, to this day, running shit. It's crazy. It's almost like they... Like they built these in place and it's like, yeah, but we'll make majority of it like a free democratic republic. You know what I mean? But then it's like, but, but we not still for have us. This. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we'll still have yeah. this. Like just to give the illusion, to give that. Right. That thought that, yeah. like, hey, this is for the people. Yeah. But but it but it's like you're voting, but not really. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Like <laughs> there, we're still going to run shit. There's still something built into place to kind of. And it, and it just, you know, and it's like people are so. It, I almost feel like there's so much social strife and discourse and it's almost like a look over there thing. Yeah. Like we're going to take all the money and <laughs> do everything and you guys just battle about whatever you're angry about on, on social politics and we're going to be over here and we're going to plant these stories and manipulate everybody and, and really none of that shit really matters and, and we're just off here being gazillionaires. More things change, the more they stay the same. More they stay. It's all yeah. it's all just window dressing for what's actually going on. Yeah. Absolutely. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah. yeah. If you believe this kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. There's probably something there. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I can't get to the Who knows? There's yeah. definitely something. But that City of London thing I found very That is intriguing. fascinating. Yeah. yeah. That is fascinating. Because the way you kept saying it, I was like, dude, I didn't want to sound dumb. Be like, dude, you're talking about fucking you're London. you talking about London, London, man? Why are you calling it the City of London? If you, you could pull just say up, London. Like, if you pull up, like, a map of London, if you put in, like, the City of London, it it is, like, this little speck inside of what is now Greater London. Westminster was only built... So you have like the Tower of London's on the outside. That was built by, you know, I think that was built by William the Conqueror too, basically because he was suspicious of the city of London. So he built that. And then like a few generations later, they built um, Westminster Abbey and tried to make, you know, right, which is right near the original city of London. Mm -hmm. And from there, they're like, no, this is the new capital of England, Westminster Abbey. And from there, the rest of London kind of sprawled around and it completely encircles the original city of London that had that Roman wall built around uh -huh. it. But it's like tiny compared to the greater London that we think of now. Mm -hmm. Like London's huge. The city of London is very small. But all the power and all the wealth is, is located in, there. It's in a little tiny spot. Correct. Damn. Yeah. Well, all right. Some fascinating stuff. Open up your brain a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. Go check some stuff out. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure people will hit us up with more things about that, especially that city of London. That's fascinating. Like yeah. you said. Um, Chief, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. That's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We will see you then.